Thank you. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Trevor Fennell, as uh, I was introduced, I'm secretary of SEMA, which is the Specialist Access Engineering and Maintenance Association. And this little presentation has been prepared around the need for operator training for suspended access equipment. It's basically going to be looking at equipment which is pers uh, per blah, 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 permanently installed, but it also does have some uh, connotations for temporarily installed access systems. So definitions. Suspended access equipment or building maintenance units. Uh, equipment designed to provide safe access so that a facade of a building can be lightly maintained or the windows cleaned, etc. Um, you may or may not be familiar with it, but if you look down at the bottom of the slide, there's some little photographs showing you what a building maintenance unit or access system could be. It could be a big machine on the roof, or it could be a davit, it could be a, a cradle system inside an atrium, etc. Safe working load of, of uh, specialist um, suspended access equipment can safely lift, is designed by the manufacturer, displayed, etc. There is no one particular figure, it will depend on what that system has been designed for. All the um, systems that members provide are normally bespoke to that particular building. Um, my members are being asked more and more by architects to provide glass replacement units. You can imagine if you have a 35-story building and something unforeseen happens, a piece of glass gets broken at 30 stores up, um, you don't want to be bringing in scaffolding and things like that to replace that piece of glass. So some of these machines now are designed with a separate glass replacement unit, which means that on rare, rare, rare occasions, a piece of glass can be lifted, put into position and replaced. They're not designed for use during the uh, construction phase to be used time after time, but sometimes they do get used um, if... Uh, if certain things go wrong in the construction phase, for instance, we have one member who provided a piece of equipment which was meant for window cleaning, and when he totted up what had happened, 48 pieces of glass were replaced during the construction phase, and we worked out that the building the maintenance unit had probably done something like 12 and a half years' work in providing the, uh, the lifting appliance for those, uh, those panels. So. Uh, cradle facade and restraint, you can obviously understand if you're on a fairly high-rise building and there's a wind around, you have to make sure that the operatives are safe, so uh, systems are de in, in designed into the um, unit so that the operator is working in a safe, comfortable environment. Uh, the standard said that if you're above 40 meters high, then you must provide some form of restraint system below 40 meters, then you can work without restraint. Uh, some more definitions. Um, holding down units, these units are provided, um, normally the units themselves are provided by the uh, SEMA member and are cast into place to the SEMA member's drawings but by the main contractor. Um, they, should be, they will be of stainless steel to meet the uh, various requirements. Competent person, you find in certain legislation it describes a competent person and who a competent person is. And there, the um, uh, definition we have taken from several areas uh, of what designates and what, uh, me, uh, what is meant by a competent person. There's also requirements for duty holders. Who is a duty holder? The person who's in charge of that building at the time the work is being done. The duty holder could be, during the construction phase, the actual main contractor, his representative. It could actually be when the building's finished and handed over and is being used, it could be the facilities manager. And he has certain uh, requirements and, and need to, uh, things he must fulfill. The appointed person is, again, is assigned by the duty holder. Um, who would be in charge of that piece of suspended access equipment. I gave a talk uh, yesterday when mentioned the, um, op uh, the appointed person and the duty holder. At SEMA, we find many, many 
uh, clients who've had the equipment installed who think all they do is to go down and they employ Fred Bloggs window cleaning company and that's their duty finished, wipe your hands, it's all their, their responsibility now. If they sit down and read what's required of them by law, that isn't all over now. The book stops with them. So if you're a duty holder, you need to really think what you need to do. If you're going to employ Fred Bloggs window cleaner, that's fine, no problem. But make sure Fred Bloggs window cleaner knows the equipment he's going to use and has been trained to use it. Make sure he's using the right PPE. Make sure he understands what he's doing. And the great thing is also make sure that Fred Bloggs window cleaner, if it's Charlie Smith, one of his employees who's been trained on your equipment, make sure it's Charlie Smith who turns up to do it, not someone else because Charlie Smith was doing another block somewhere else. In other words, the send an untrained person. It's your responsibility as a duty holder to make sure that the right people are using your equipment. Method statements, risk assessments. These are things that you should have in place if you're the duty holder so that at any time you are able to say, well, this guy who turns up, he knows what he's doing because he's read the method statement, it's there available, and everybody involved knows what should be happening with that equipment. <coughs> Standard BMU unit, as I mentioned, it's a machine that travels along a track with a cradle attached, and down goes the guy, cleans your windows, comes back up, goes for his luncheon, or, or when he's finished, leaves it in a proper pos um, position, parking position, uh, and it's then they're ready to use the next day by another competent person or himself if he's still working on that job. There are very, very many um, types of machines. They can go from uh, simple units, <coughs> which is standard BMU, compact crane, or you can go to large cranes. We're now actually designing machines that will have an outreach of 38 meters. So you can imagine you don't want to be playing around at the end of 38 meters of outreach not knowing what you're supposed to be driving and what you're supposed to be doing. The very, very um, bespoke systems because architects, God bless them, don't design 10 buildings the same. They have 10 buildings and each one of them is different. So each one of the machines and sets of equipment that my members provide is slightly different. <coughs> Definitions continue, that's a davit, one of the most simple pieces of equipment you can get. There's monorails, uh, where you have a cradle moving around a track which is hidden under the soffit. Uh, powered cradles, which and hang on davits, hang on the monorail system. And then you have gantries, which sometimes provide access for window cleaning, domes or something like that. You very often find these on some of the modern shopping centers. There's a whole section here on um, duty holder responsibilities and it's the duty holder who is legally responsible to ensure that the suspended access equipment is safe and fit for purpose, which it's designed. So it goes without saying, the duty holder needs to understand right from the start what this equipment was designed for. That's the duty holder's responsibility. That's why I said earlier, the duty holder just can't get hold of Fred Bloggs and say, do you clean windows? He says, yes, say, well, there you are, that's your contract, my job done, it isn't. <clears throat> He's got to make sure it's properly maintained and records kept of the uh, maintenance that's done and examined. So there is very often a need to be working with a member of SAFED, which is the um, uh, insurance company's engineering, so he's going to sign it off. Um, so, and they also need to be used by adequately con uh, competent trained operatives. Now, one of the reasons that SEMA uh, felt that there was a need for operator training to be done uh, how we propose to do it, which I'll go into later, is the fact that a lot of members found themselves they get a call out, your cradle's broken down, so the guy goes down, stops the job he's doing, uh, especially in London, if he's North London and it's South London, it takes him two hours to get there, gets onto the job, goes up, and what does he find? The window cleaner's bent over to wring out his chamois leather or something like that, and his backside has caught the emergency stop, and there is no breakdown. 
but he hasn't been adequately trained and he doesn't understand that what he's just done by pressing in the emergency stop is cut everything. So our idea is to run a course which will start with a basic course for people using suspended access equipment. They'll be taken through the uh, normal procedures, whether it's a cradle mounted hoist or it's a roof mounted hoist, of what they should look for, how they operate it, how they operate it properly. After they've completed that course, then they will be asked to attend courses on specific actual e uh, equipment which is on specific buildings. For instance, if you've been working on a small building that's a nice standard small machine, and you've been cleaning windows happily, and you've got your little certificate that says you've been trained by uh, SEMA, and your boss says, oh, by the way, we've won a new job, and I want you to go clean the windows. Oh, where is it, Governor? Well, it's just down in London. It's on the South Bank. It's called um, the Shard. Now, you know, that has got equipment on there which is specific to that building. So not only do you have to know what your requirements and what your duties are to clean windows and what you should be wearing, etc. There is areas on that building where the machines have been specifically designed for that building and there is a specific way of operating that equipment. So, okay, <coughs> you as a duty holder arrange for him to be trained by the proper person who knows all about that equipment, which will be the installer. The idea will be that a SEMA card, you will, a bit like an um, IRATA card, it will have um, a history of what you've been working on. So in other words, if you're going to go work for Fred Bloggs, window cleaning, he can say to you, well, what other things have you done? Oh, I cleaned windows, mate. But you need to know it's more than with a small ladder cleaning shop window. And it, when the uh, system gets running with his record basis, Fred Bloggs will be able to look and say, oh, yeah, he's done standard stuff. That Oh, brother, he's been trained on the shard. So the, the idea of the courses that we will be preparing and running will have some tie-up with actually the experience that that particular uh, operator has had. The duty holder, again, he needs to be, uh, he needs to ask the question, does, of Fred Bloggs, do your operators know what they are using and know what they're doing? Fred Bloggs has then got to be able to say, yes, they do, and here's the proof. The duty holder is sometimes not situated on the job. If you're working for a big uh, facilities management company, you may be based in Birmingham, and the job you're talking about may be in London. So you appoint someone on that site who is your appointed person, and he asks the relevant questions, and there should be something in your system which says, Charlie Smith is my appointed person on that building, and this is his package, so he knows the relevant questions to ask to make sure myself, the duty holder, has got all the information to hand. Everything's wonderful until there's an incident. Then all of a sudden, all the questions start to be asked. And if you don't have the information available, you can get yourself into terrible problems. So the idea is do it properly. Have a system in place if you're a duty holder, which will follow the, the lines, you know who your appointed person is on a site, you know who the contractor is going to be on the site, you know that that contractor has been adequately trained in general for site safety, for working at height, etc., etc. You know that he's had some training for <coughs> operation of BMUs or other uh, equipment within uh, the facade access system, and you also know that he's actually had some specific training for that equipment, and that's what you need to do as a uh, a competent person as a duty holder, make sure that you have people involved. Appropriate PPE, um, normally on a, on a BMU, it will normally be the window cleaner <coughs> who will be using a harness and a lanyard. If there's anything else needed, then if you're the duty holder, you've got to make sure that's available. And if you're the appointed person, you've got to know what it is and you've got to know it's adequately stored. And, and being looked after. So, you know, it's not as easy as just employing Fred Bloggs and say, well, I can walk away from it all now for Fred takes care of everything. He can't. You, you have to be uh, involved. Full body harnesses and lanyards are normally needed on all uh, suspended access equipment. Safety clothing, gloves, helmets, 
um, maybe um, weatherproof clothing and whatever, because the last thing you want is to be able to go on a, a building and it's a nice fine day. Ten minutes later, it's raining very heavily and the machine is a very difficult one and could probably take you an hour and a half to get back into the, uh, into the parking space. So it could, it could be anything that suits that specific piece of equipment. <coughs> Radios and um, mobiles for uh, being able to contact the window cleaner or the uh, facade operative. It's essential that before he goes out there in a cradle, there is a method, a known method of being able for him to contact you and you to contact him. And very often, mobile phones is not the answer. If you're down in London and you're about, you know, 250 uh, uh, feet up, very often you haven't got a very good signal. So you can't always rely on, oh, well, he's got his phone and I've got mine. Very often you have to organize dedicated radio control. Again, this is something that the, um, the duty holder and his, his appointed person needs to be sure of. Uh, an anometer um, is very often called for so that at least you can tell just how windy it is. On any building, you always have a quiet side. Maybe the north face isn't affected by the wind that day. The south face, could, you could actually be blown to pieces. So it's an idea for you to be able to check and find out just what the wind's doing. Reporting to site, it should be within the site rules that uh, the wind cleaner or operative has to report that he's there, sign in, checked in, signs for some keys so he can get to the equipment, not just wander up because he knows the guy uh, on the desk and he can go up and have his cup of tea and then just jump in the cradle when he likes. There has to be a proper um, system of being a record of being, when you're on site, what you're going to do on site. Work permits are very often a good idea. Um, at least you authorize someone to go out and do his job. And there is then a record that what time he arrived and when he was doing his job. Again, everything's fine so long as nothing goes wrong. When something goes wrong, boy, do you realize how important it is to have these things in place. Access door keys or passes. It's been known for the window cleaner to go on site, the door blows closed and he can't get back uh, into the building. You know, it's, it's basic, but it needs to be looked at, at the, right at the start, at the uh, documentation uh, period. Equipment keys, you should make sure that keys are available because a lot of this equipment, you need a key to release the, uh, um, the MAMES contactor so that you can start working. You also need to make sure that somebody as a lark doesn't go, take the key out, walk away and leave the guy standing, stranded. All this has to be covered. The uh, anometer, as I mentioned, is uh, quite a good thing because you don't want to be sending people out there in working in windy conditions that could uh, actually lead to a dangerous situation. The emergency procedures need to be set and understood by anybody who's going out to use that equipment. And very often, the well-run sites, you actually have to tick the box, sign your name, to say that you've understood and you've seen the emergency um, uh, procedures. That's a, a well-run site. And then there's no excuse. I was stuck out there, Governor. I didn't know what the hell to do but you've actually read and these were explained to you, so you should have known what to do. Communication devices we've gone through. Risk assessment and method statements, they are very, very important because the, if you're going to be working at height, it's in everybody's interest when you're designing, installing, to reduce that risk to the absolute minimum. But there'll always be a risk. You can't design it out fully. You can design it to an acceptable level, but to say, oh, we've designed everything out, well, what you've done is you've said, I'll stand on the pavement and the building will go up and down and I'll clean the windows as they pass. That's about the only way you could do it. So risk assessments and method statements are essential and they should be part of the equipment and the, uh, the paperwork that is held on site and looked after by the duty holder's appointed person. Uh, obtain uh, information from duty holder it goes without saying, um, further information that's attack, uh, that uh, is applied to that particular site needs to be in the risk assessments and method statements. So there is a proper pre-use checks. They should be uh, included in your um, method statement risk assessments. 
operators should take extra care of gusts and funneling of winds. You can get tremendous changes in the strength of the wind if you're on a building here and south of that building there's two larger buildings which force the air if it's blowing from the south through a gap you've all you've included the increased the velocity and you've also increased the wind pressure so it is it's very good to be aware that um, you know the surroundings are as important as the building you're going to be working on now, I've got a young lady work, uh, doing time to me. I don't think she wants to bring me a cup of tea. She's telling me it's time to, you know, you've come to an end. All I will say is that this presentation will be available on the uh, website for uh, the Access Industry Forum. It's also available from SEMA. I happen to be the SEMA secretary, so the information of our organization is fully available, and I can arrange for you to have um, copies of this. And I profusely apologize for taking too long uh, but uh, really there's there's nothing much more to say that is just expansion on the points I've tried to get across thank you for your time if you have any questions I'm going to be sat outside there uh, be quite happily happy sit down and discuss anything in particular with you thank you on behalf of SEMA